Welcome to Bold Guy DIY. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can code a simple graphical user interface or GUI, and I'm going to show you how you can interface that with the Raspberry Pi to control those input output pins for all your project desires. If you're like me, when you create a project that has buttons or switches, you've often dreamed about using a software interface to do the work instead of having to use those physical buttons and switches. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can create a simple graphical user interface using a module for Python called PySimple GUI, and then I'll also show you how you can set it up to control inputs and outputs for a Raspberry Pi. If you've seen my last video on running an auto start or auto run script at boot, and you put this video with that one, you have a great remote control interface that'll work perfect for your next project. So without further ado, let's get started. So for this graphical user interface, I'm gonna be using a Python module called PySimple GUI, and that's a very simplified uh, Python wrapper for some of the more complicated and intricate graphical user interface tools, such as TKinter, PyQt, things like that. By being simplified just means that the structure and layout of the code is much easier than it is to set up for those larger, more complicated modules. If you go to the website, you can see you know, instructions and a basic explanation of how it works. You can go to the call reference section and get every single function and call that you can do. And then you can go to the cookbook to see example code that you could use for specific types of situations and different things that you could do. Uh, even if you don't understand how to use it all right off the beginning, just being able to see what other people have created and and to benefit off of it can be really useful. If you go to the GitHub page that they have, often you learn something just by exploring the code that other people have created, and you find out things that you might not have thought to try on your own. If you go to the demo programs link, you'll actually get to the GitHub page that they have for PySimple GUI, and on there you'll find so many different kinds of examples that have been created, most of them by the creator of the PySimple GUI module, some of them by users of the module, and there's just so many different things that you can try. If you use the all widgets option and take that code that's listed there, you can copy and paste it into your Python IDE of choice, I'm going to use VS Code. I'm just going to copy it all in there, paste it into VS Code, and then run it in Python and just see what it actually looks like. Here's an example of all of the different types of buttons and text input boxes and list boxes and all of the different things that you can use. Combo boxes, sliders, drop down menus, all sorts of different things that are available. And it just gives you a good sampling of them and an idea of what's possible. As you can see, it's pretty complicated. I don't love the color choice, but uh, you really could do all sorts of different things. You can find files, pick colors, choose dates, all sorts of different things. And when you click submit, it'll show you here that it's keeping track of all of those variables. To plan the actual layout of the graphical user interface I want to use, I simply list out the elements that I want. In my GUI, I'm going to want a text field that has the name of the GUI. I'm going to want a button for an LED, a slider for the brightness of the LED, and another button to control a relay. If I look at how that would lay out in the actual PySimple GUI code, I'm simply going to define the layout function and then I'm going to group each of those elements into a row, separating it with commas and the square brackets. The square brackets are what divide out each individual row and then the commas just to let you know that that's in between each element. If you want multiple elements on a single row, you simply put more than one item inside of the square brackets for that row, separating them with a comma. Let's take a look at the actual code I created created here in VS Code. I start by importing the PySimple GUI library. Now if you haven't installed it yet, you simply do a pip3 install PySimple GUI from terminal window and it will install. I'm also using the Raspberry Pi GPIO0 module and I'm going to import from there the LED and the PWM LED function. I'm going to define two different objects here, one called LED, which is going to use the PWM LED function, which is going to allow me to uh, vary the brightness, and that's going to be on pin 4. For the relay, I'm just going to use the basic LED function, which is essentially just a simple switch, and I'm going to call that variable relay. So it might look a little bit weird that I'm using LED for the relay, but that's basically just telling it that it is a simple on-off output. 
with the layout as I described, very simplified. It's simply going to define my four different rows, the text box, the button, the slider, and the final button. I also added an exit button on the bottom just to be able to break out of the GUI if necessary, uh, depending on how you design it and how you want your Raspberry Pi to function when you're finished. You might leave the exit button out if you don't want the user to be able to exit the interface. Each of these items has their own, each of these items has their own switches or controls in order to differentiate the font size, uh, the position, the coloring, how much padding is around each button, all of those kinds of things. And so that you can find those, you can find all the details for those on the Pi Simple GUI webpage. As I showed, look at the call references, you can see all of the different options that are available. Once you've completed the layout, you need to declare a window, and that window is going to reference the layout that you've created and actually build the graphical user interface. So the standard form is window equals sg.window, and then you define you know, the name of it. That's gonna be the title if you have a title bar, and then you're gonna, the next option is your layout, which in this case has been called layout, and size, the physical size of the screen or the window that you want. Here I'm using 800 by 480 because that is the resolution of the Raspberry Pi touchscreen that I'm using. Element justification center, just because I want all of my widgets or elements to be in the middle. And then the last one is finalize equals true. And as I mentioned in the previous video, if you make finalize equals true, set the right size for the screen, and then use this window.maximize function below it, it will cause your window, it will cause the GUI window to fill the entire screen and give you a professional looking full screen graphical user interface. Next, I need to declare two button states. So the default in the example I used was down. So I just made down equals false because I want the button not to be selected by default. And then I made a B2 down, which is simply button two, also false because I don't want it to be on by default. For a persistent window or one that keeps scanning and keeps updating, you need to create a true loop. So while true is just your event loop, it's gonna constantly read the events looking for button presses, slider movement, all of those things, and it's going to uh, read those values and store them on the individual variables. The if statement is the important part, checking for the conditions of those button presses, and the default one is if the window is closed, then it just wants to exit the code. I also put an LED off and a relay off because I want it to close the window and turn off those outputs if the interface is closed or if there's a crash, that kind of thing. I don't want them to stay on uh, in my particular case. The elif commands or the else if are basically there to read the button states. So if the event equals button one or just B in this case, then it's going to trigger the code that'll tell you what to have. So in this case, it's going to read and see if the first button has been pressed. And if that button's been pressed, it's gonna execute that next block of code, which is gonna change the button state of down to not down. So it's gonna flip it to the other option. And then it's going to update the window. This because of these variable buttons that are gonna change color and uh, go from white on red to white on green. So it's gonna check a condition and update the button color uh, as it changes it. So it's gonna change it to white on green if down is true or if the button has been pressed. Otherwise, it's gonna be white on red. So you can clearly see that it's turned off. And then I also have another statement here. If down is true, meaning that the button is on, then it's also going to update the brightness and set it to level 10. Brightness is what I call the slider. So it's gonna change it to level 10, which means that it's gonna start at the highest brightness setting. LED value one means that it's going to do it also at the highest setting because LED value is the command that you use. Zero would be off, one would be full brightness, and any fraction in between is a different level of brightness. If the button is not pressed, which means that down is, uh, is not true, then the LED is just going to turn off. Second event is if the second button is pushed, this is the relay button. So it's going to toggle the state of the B2 down variable and just switch it to whichever it isn't at the time. And then it's gonna update again the color of the button so that if it's off, it's gonna be white writing on a red background. And if it is true or on, it's going to be white writing on a green background. Another if statement here, if the button's been pressed, if it's on, then it's simply going to turn the relay on, which is gonna cause that output to trigger high and energize the relay. And else, if the button state is not on, then it's gonna turn the relay off. Finally, I put in a, finally I put in elif 
or else if statement for the, finally I put the else if statement in for the brightness slider. Again, it's just called brightness and it's just going to see if the slider value has been changed and also if the slider value has been changed and if down is true, which means that the LED button has been turned on, then it's going to change the LED value to the value of the brightness, which has been set from one to 10 divided by 10 which will give me the fraction. So my slider is gonna go, let's say, to be set at level five, which means that the actual LED value will be 0.5 or half brightness. That's all the code that I need in order for that to work. The last thing I need to do is simply run it and see what happens. If you haven't yet watched the video that I did on creating an auto run or auto start script using the desktop version or desktop settings for Raspberry Pi, check that out on the link on screen. But here I'm just creating a desktop entry in the .config file auto start folder. When I reboot the system, it's gonna load my GUI automatically. I've already tested it out here, but it's gonna restart the Raspberry Pi and immediately load into that screen so that you can see what it looks like and that it looks completely professional and ready uh, as though it's always been that way and was manufactured that way. I'm really impressed with these graphical user interfaces, how uh, simple they are, and yet by tweaking the color scheme, by changing the layout of things, you can make something that looks pretty professional. Here you can see, now that it's booted up directly to my graphical user interface, I'm testing out the functionality here. The light button turns on that green light that you can see and the slider affects the brightness. I can also turn on the relay. Here I just used another LED to show, uh, a red LED to show that the relay works. And of course, because it's a touch screen, you can simply use your finger instead of having to use the mouse to control it. This is perfect if you wanna mount the screen on the wall or some other place where the user can interact with it. All the buttons work exactly the way they should. And if you ever want to exit it, I left the exit button so that the user could return to the desktop. So after a little bit of tinkering and experimenting, I can show you finally a fairly simple method in setting up a basic graphical user interface, configuring it so it takes up the full screen for a Raspberry Pi. And now you have something that will work with push buttons or other controls in order to use the inputs and outputs of the Raspberry Pi and make it do exactly what you want. If you like this type of content and find it valuable, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and check back weekly as I post a new video every Saturday morning. If you have a comment, leave it below the video or send me an email, my information's in the description below. Until next time, whether you're using hardware or software to control all your projects, don't be afraid to be balder.